Okay, so now we're going to start looking at the class E topology. And what I've shown here is a schematic for a class E amplifier consisting of a MOS switch and the class E pulse shaping network. The network consists of a choke inductance, a shunt capacitor at the drain of the transistor, and then a series resonant circuit and an optimized reactance and resistance. So let's start with the drain capacitance. So if you recall, we needed to delay the rise in the voltage at the drain until the switch completely turns off, and our capacitor is going to allow that to happen. It delays the voltage. Now at the output, we'd like to have the voltage and current back in phase, and so we're going to add this reactance X opt in order to bring the current back in phase with the voltage. The pulse shaping that we do is going to cause some pretty nasty voltages in currents at the drain of the transistor and, and being fed towards the output. And so we add a series resonant circuit to act as a filter to select just the fundamental frequency of operation. So in principle, our operation relies on putting an optimum susceptance at the drain of the transistor. We'll call this B opt, and it involves having some X opt plus R opt looking towards the output. Now it's important to note that the optimum susceptance can incorporate some of the parasitic from the transistor. And in some cases, we don't need to make the drain inductance a choke, and we'll talk about the, the specific case a little bit later. So now let's look at the waveforms of this power amplifier. We'll assume that our input voltage is switching between VDD and ground, so we're turning the MOS transistor on and off. In the case where we turn the MOS transistor on, the current is the integral of the voltage across the inductor. When we turn the transistor off, we'll get a current that flows in the capacitor, and ideally if our pulse shaping network is done appropriately, we will get a waveform uh, at the drain voltage that's shaped as follows. So our drain voltage waveform is equal to 1 over CD times the integral from pi to 2 pi of that current waveform that's flowing into the capacitor. And one thing to note is that it, in an ideal class E power amplifier, it can have a, volt, a value as high as 3.6 times VDD due to the pulse shaping. And this was problematic for class E transistors using MOS devices. We will note here that we can cascode the MOS device in order to help protect it from this large voltage swing. Okay, in the SoCal paper that I had referred to uh, in the last lecture, uh, it was from JSSC in 1975, uh, we can find the design equations for the class E power amplifier. And these are classical equations that are similar to all power amplifiers. We're going to relate the output power to an optimum termination impedance. And in this case, we're also going to use values that are synthesized uh, for the X opt and B opt terms based upon that optimum termination resistance. Here we find that our output power is equal to 0.577 times VDD squared divided by R opt. Or we could find R opt if we had a required output power would be 0.577 times VDD squared divided by P out. Now, one nice thing to note here is that this 0.577 term is bigger than the 0.5 term that we would have had for a similar class A or class B amplifier. And we also note that we don't have to worry about the knee voltage in the case of our class E amplifiers. We're going to switch the device completely on or completely off. Now our terms for X opt and B opt can be found if we know the termination resistance. So X opt is equal to 1.525 times R opt, and B opt is equal to 0.1836 divided by R opt. These tell us how to size the excess series inductance and the drain capacitance. So how do we size the switch transistor? So we're modeling our uh, switch transistor as a switch with some on resistance, or in our case, as a MOS with an RDS value. Now in the off state, we know that ID is equal to zero. ID and in the on state, we're going to assume that the device will be in deep triode. 
So we can use our definition for RDS as the derivative of the current with respect to the voltage, the inverse of that when the drain to source voltage is equal to zero. Here we note that VOV is fixed as the gate is going to switch between zero and VDD. Now we know that we'd ideally like to have zero resistance in our switch, uh, so what we're going to do is try and size W over L to give a small RDS. Now we can find the power dissipated in the resistance is given by the following. Our power dissipated in the resistance is equal to 8 thirds times R switch times P out divided by VDD squared. So we can see that the power dissipated in the switch is proportional to 1 over W. So this tells us we want to make W big. But we also have to switch the gate of the MOS transistor to make this happen. And so we can figure out what the input power is. Our input power is equal to 1 half CGS times VDD squared times F naught. And our input capacitance is proportional to W. So this tells us we have two competing goals. We'd like to minimize the switch resistance, uh, which will uh, require increasing W. We'd also like to minimize the switch capacitance, which tells us that we should be decreasing W. Now this basically tells us that there's probably a convex optimum where if we uh, change the size of the switch, um, in one case the input power might be dominant, uh, and as we uh, increase W, uh, or sorry, as we decrease W, um, the, the uh, input power uh, will uh, reduce, but the power dissipated in the resistance will increase. Typically, we like to size the transistor so that our input power is equal to our uh, uh, switching power. So when we design the power amplifier, we're going to, if we want to achieve a certain output power, uh, we're going to have to, to over-design uh, the switch to account for the loss that's going to happen in the switch. So the total power that we need to design for is going to be equal to the output power plus the switching loss power, and I'll note plus maybe some loss that we might have in our matching network or pulse shaping network. So from this we can make our substitutions into our expression for power or for the total power and then we can solve uh, for our op uh, given the desired output power. Okay and this is uh, generally uh, the strategy in trying to uh, devise uh, how we size the switch. Now I noted here that um, we might have some loss in our matching network and uh, a few lectures ago we talked about how to calculate what the loss might be. So if we know what our impedance transformation is going to need to be in order to achieve a desired power, we can also start to account for loss in the matching network. Uh, the easiest way to do this is to write up some MATLAB code that takes into account all of these uh, considerations uh, in sizing the switch. So we're going to stop there, and in the next uh, part of the lecture, we'll look at some practical design considerations in CMOS.